Good morning. My name is Daryl Hyde. I have the privilege of heading up architecture at hosting.com. Um, been with the organization for quite a number of years and been very excited about uh, a product that we recently built on top of the VGW platform called Cloud Firewall. Uh, it's done a lot for our customers and, and almost equally importantly, it's done a tremendous amount to simplify our own architecture and to simplify the way that we deliver services to our customers. So let me tell you just a little bit about us. Um, we concentrate on cloud hosting and application uh, hosting services for mission critical applications. So that's your bet the business application. I think the th you know the the line is the the application that either keeps you out of, keeps you out of jail um, or you know keeps make sure you get paid. And that's really where we focus uh, a, a lot of our our, our core architecture. Um, we're distributed across the across the U.S. in uh, in six different markets. Um, we have been growing. Uh, at, a, at a pretty rapid pace, and we actually offer our cloud services in five of these sites and intend to have our cloud services offered at all six of them uh, in the fairly near future. Tell you a little bit about um, our public cloud platform, and the reason I want to talk about that is that's the platform that we're actually delivering the service to today. Um, it was launched in 2009. Uh, it was built on VMware vSphere 5. Um, it's powered by Juniper, EMC, and Dell presently. And uh, it supports over 2,600 VMs across 180 physical servers and distribu distributed across five different locations. Um, so that's, you know, and, and what's interesting about that is we'll allow a customer to come into our portal and spin up VMs across any location they like. Um, so you've got an easy way to build a really geographically disparate, um, a geographically distributed application. Um, the concept I'd really like to talk to you about, though, today is, is kind of the philosophy around the way that we deliver services. And I want to kind of have more of a I guess I would say more of a fundamental conversation about service delivery in kind of the, in, in kind of the new model of computing that we're all here kind of talking about this week. Um, and, and I call that transition of thought um, kind of virtual mentality. It's, it's the way we used to think about service delivery and the way we should be thinking about service delivery now. And we had to go through this transition internally when really dreaming up how we wanted to build this product. Um, so some of the tenets of the old way of doing things. Well, one of those was we had had to adapt the old service delivery mechanisms to virtualization. So that meant, well, I'm selling a VM today, and I really want to be able to deliver the same services to it that I used to deliver to a physical machine. And I try to want to pretend that it's the same thing. So I want to treat that, that VM just like it's a physical machine so that I have complete service parity. And that, that worked well in the beginning. Uh, and, and, but the problem is that, that we've, we've built this whole layer of abstraction with virtualization, but we're still, when we're doing things that way, we're forcing customers to understand network topology. You know, when they build a V, when, when a customer buys a VM, they don't want to have to worry about what zone it's going to go in, what VLAN, what network. They just know they want to spin up workload and they want it to function. They know that they want to secure it, but they don't want to have to think about, well, what network does it have to go into? What's the prefix it's going to go into? Is that address in use? They don't want to have to think about these things as they're spinning up and spinning up and down workload because it's just inefficient. Um, and this was really actually kind of reflected in, in some of the original goals that we had when we built our public cloud platform. The big piece of that was complete service parity. As I just said, we wanted to be able to offer all the traditional inline services, firewall, IDS, load balancing. Um, and on top of that, we wanted to be hybrid from the start. And so that means customers who were already using physical servers from us, we wanted them to be able to spin up VMs in their existing VLANs within the public cloud. We wanted those VMs to be able to live behind their existing firewalls, and we wanted those VMs to be able to live within existing server load balancing pools. And I would say it was probably about a year ago around this time um, that I started kind of really visualizing how we would do it uh, and, and, and exactly how that would come together. And that, that transfer of, of, of that, that sort of evolution of thought uh, kind of brought me to what I call virtual mentality two. And the first one is to leverage the hypervisor to offload services. We can, we can drop uh, a, a software-based firewalling onto, onto all of our operating systems using IP tables and PF and Windows firewall, but you've got five different ways to do it. They impact performance of the host in varying ways. They're somewhat unpredictable, um, and, and they're just not consistent, and, and they're not really the thing that, uh, that, uh, that, that your security team is, is used to working with. Generally speaking, you've got some bifurcation there between you know, kind of your security operations group uh, and, and, and folks that are maintaining servers. And they're not they don't necessarily want to be uh, kind of in each other's way. So what we want to do is find a way to, to, to move the firewalling services and move security policy enforcement you know, out from in front of the host on a physical firewall, but not put it onto the host in a way that it causes, uh, uh, that'll consume more resources. 
Um, so we want also less dependency on network topology. This is really important because people want to be able to spin up and down workload fairly easily. They want to even be able to automate those changes, and the more factors that we force them to take into consideration to automate changes, the more difficult it is for them to do it. And frankly, the more difficult it is for us to build APIs and build automation infrastructure for them to do it. So really, everybody wins there. And the other thing is a simpler provisioning experience. Again, customers want to be able to spin up and down workload on demand very, very easily. They don't want to have to think about, you know, again, what network is, going to, is this VM going to go into? Is this IP address already in use? They, these, these changes should be abstracted from them. We should be providing them a services abstraction layer that, that prevents that from them ever having to make that decision. Um, and this is really the vision for Cloud Firewall, which is the product that we recently built on top of the, uh, the VGW platform. So the big piece here, again, security policy completely decoupled from network topology. This is really important because customers don't think of security in terms of, of, of networks and zones and VLANs. Generally speaking, they think of it in terms of applications. We want to be able to, do, to group completely arbitrary uh, uh, assets into logical groups and the right policy for them without having to know what network they're going to go into and what their default route is and what this static route is. And this guy's running BGP, so his route's going to be over here. They don't have to think about that. So realistically, the other thing we wanted was customers to be able to manage and, and provision the product completely independent of that. And then kind of the last tenant there uh, uh, was zero impact install. We want a customer to have, be able to, to, to purchase a service at time of, of, of installation for us, but at the same time, we also want them to be able to opt into it later. And we want that to be a, a zero impact experience. That's really, really important. Again, we just talked about what would happen when uh, an existing customer uh, uh, spins up a, a physical firewall well, we can make that a, a much smoother experience. And kind of the last piece of that is a self-service user interface. You should leverage SDKs and APIs to expose these things to your customers so that they can, if they want to make their own security policy changes or just view changes that are made, they have, they have you know, a, a, a services layer for doing that as opposed to having to constantly reach into your operational teams and ask them to, oh, could you make this change? Could you make that change? Uh, again, we're trying, to take, uh, we're trying to take overhead off of our operations team so they can take care of customers. So when we started thinking about this, we, we started thinking about what is the technology we want to use. And we looked at a lot of the, there was, there was a number of, uh, of, of players in that space that were doing sort of the hypervisor layer firewalling. Uh, and, and, and ultimately, we arrived at, at, at the, the, the VMSafe API model as being the, the most efficient. Uh, we did a lot of stress testing. We did um, you know, a, a lot of kind of multi-tenant safe testing. You know, the biggest, uh, uh, I, I've, I've railed against shared firewall technologies for, for years. And that was because ultimately, at some point, you know, my, my CPU's ability to create new sessions, to ramp up new sessions, at some point that, that, that peaks out. There's only so many new sessions per second I can create, and once I've exhausted that for customer A, I can't do it for customer B. Um, and so realistically speaking, this became the best way to go. Now, we started looking at the shared customer pod again. And so instead of putting a physical firewall in front of that customer, now that customer can just subdivide out policy. They can build policy between completely arbitrary VMs, and as they expand into different pods, that becomes very, very easy to do. Additional security at layer two. Think about this. If I compromise you know, yellow VM number one up there, I don't have direct access to yellow VM number two. That's really important, because with traditional inline firewalling, you don't have that available to you. So what's the user experience like? Well, the first piece is very, very simple. We want to allow a simple ordering process. You've got less than 15 clicks through our portal from the time when you order the service to when it's online. Uh, we're ready to manage in less than 10 minutes. Uh, we want to be, allow you to group VMs based on the, the application, not based on a, a network or a zone, and then create policy. It's that simple. Now, something you'll notice about these screenshots, uh, right up at the top there, that's my username in our portal. This, I pulled these screenshots live out of our portal on the plane. So this is, this is functionality that exists today that customers can use. This is how I order the service. This is how I add a, add a VM to a group. This is how I create policies, just like that. I build policies, it's very, very, very simple. And that's what's key to this. We want to provide a simple, simple user experience. So what's the conclusion? The hypervisor isn't just something that we plug into the network. The hypervisor isn't just a, a, another thing that's out there, another endpoint. It's an extension of your network and realistically needs to be an extension of the way you deliver services. Um, customers, think in terms of security with applications, not networks. Uh, and then lastly, virtualization should allow you to decouple more services from the network. You should be able to do more switching on the hypervisor than you are uh, uh, you know, on the host or on an inline appliance. Thank you guys very much.